Morales. And that breaking news, a wild chase and shootout that started with a man trying to get into the local FBI office with a gun. Good evening to you. I'm Ashley Kirkland. And I'm Sheree Palo. So investigators say this all started with the guy firing a nail gun at law enforcement inside that FBI facility where the visitors come in. We have live team coverage for you as several law enforcement agencies from the federal, state, and local uh, levels are all involved here. Now, again, this all started at the FBI office in Sycamore Township when officials say that suspect tried to get in with a gun. That started then a chase along 71 through Warren County, ending right now in Clinton County. And we begin with WLWT News 5's Karen Johnson at the media staging area with the latest on the investigation. Karen? Hey guys, that's right. I am at the staging area. I am on the other side of I-71 from where this scene is unfolding. I do expect we'll be getting an update uh, very shortly from either the Clinton County Emergency Management Agency or the Ohio State Highway Patrol because in the last hour or so, there has been a lot of activity, a lot of scanner activity, which I'm not going to report until we have some kind of confirmation. We do know the Dayton Bomb Squad, though, arrived on scene about uh, two hours ago. What I can tell you is this did start down in Cincinnati F at the FBI field office around 915 this morning and my colleague Brian Hamrick will have more details on those specific details. But there was a man, according to authorities, who tried to break into the field office. That guy took off. He went up 71 into Warren County. Now, at the Warren County, once he was in Warren County, there is a rest stop area. That's when the Ohio State Highway Patrol says they spotted the car, started following the vehicle, Police say the suspect then turned around, fired at troopers who were following him, led them into Clinton County. There was a little bit of pursuit here eventually at the intersection of State Route 73, 308. Around that area is when the suspect got out of the vehicle. There's a cornfield there. Area went on lockdown and for the last several hours, actually all day, there has been an active standoff. And the last update we got was about an hour, an hour and a half ago, saying there was an active standoff. They were telling people in the area to be vigilant. They had eyes on the suspect, but we do know he was armed. Uh, but again, in the last hour, we started hearing uh, some activity on the scanners, so we are expecting an update shortly. Uh, and as soon as we get an update here at the staging area, we'll make sure to pass it along to you. Reporting live in Clinton County, Karen Johnson, WLWT News 5. Karen, I know all of this information still coming in. You mentioned there uh, at the very beginning that you are expecting some sort of update. I'm sure people in that area are wanting to be able to get into their homes, get into their businesses or leave their businesses. Are you getting word that maybe they have this guy in custody or anything like that? You know, uh, Sheree, uh, what we are hearing is that they were uh, they were closing in on the suspect. Closing in is the best word to use, but at this point, we don't know if he's in custody. We don't know if uh, more shots were fired. You know, earlier in the day, there was gunfire exchange when he first got out of his vehicle. But the last update that I heard, they were closing in on him. But again, we hope to get more information because there was a lockdown. There still is a lockdown within a mile radius of where the situation is unfolding. So I can only imagine the businesses, the people who were told to stay inside, lock their doors, uh, they have to be terrified. So I know that authorities here in Clinton County, they have been on it in terms of updating the public. So as soon as that threat is over, I'm sure they will inform us so then we can inform the public. All right, Karen Johnson live. And of course, we'll check back. And the only good news, at least so far this afternoon, does not look like any agents or any police officers were hurt in the exchange of that gunfire yeah, Karen was yeah. talking about. And we do continue our team coverage just off of Smith Road there in Clinton County. And that's where we find WLWT News News anchor Curtis Fuller. He's live where that suspect eventually was surrounded. Hi there, Curtis. Yeah, he, he sure was. Hi there, uh, Cherie and Ashley. You know, I just talked to the owner of the farm that this guy is uh, at, and he said there literally are hundreds of armed officers lining the road leading up to his farm. Uh, this guy will not get out of there unless he, he gives himself up. Uh, and, and obviously, if he shoots toward police, uh, and law, other law enforcement that that could trigger a, a not a happy ending. I will tell you this, that there has been a lot of activity and, and you heard Karen reference this, but one thing we can tell you, 
about maybe 45 minutes ago, uh, we saw a care flight helicopter land. Uh, the uh, owner of that property told me that care flight uh, landed right in his front yard. Uh, he did tell me that the, the suspect is at that time injured. He said he was injured. That's what he was being told. He still has uh, family members on the farm. They're not in any danger whatsoever, he believes. Uh, it's about a three to 400 acre um, land, according to him. And we'll hear directly from him in their next half hour. But he was able to give an interesting perspective, even showing uh, me a photo of all the vehicles, all the law enforcement lined up. It is a sight that uh, you rarely see. Uh, he said SWAT is on the ground, and you, you heard Karen talk about uh, Dayton bomb crew also on the scene. So uh, I talked to one officer uh, a little while ago, and he said what they're doing is just trying to wait this guy out. Obviously, they want to find out what in the heck he was thinking about, um, uh, as we're being told earlier today. And so uh, they're trying to wait him out as long as they can, but uh, it appears this, this is going to be up to him. And as Karen said, we, we uh, are hearing some things uh, on the ground that we don't want to report yet until there is uh, full confirmation of that. But uh, uh, I, I expect that within this newscast, uh, just sit tight and we'll be able to give you more information about what's happening uh, behind me here. Reporting live, I'm Curtis Fuller, WLWT News 5. Yeah, Curtis, we certainly will be standing by for any uh, updates or developments. Now, I see that traffic is passing you now in that area. Are the roads open? What should people know about driving in that area? Yeah, uh, a good question. Not open. Uh, they're just detoured. You can see here, this is uh, 73 and Route 73 and Route 380. And so what this basically does is loop you around. Uh, 71 North is still a mess, uh, and so they've been detouring people. Uh, in addition, there has been a little construction up here, so that's caused even uh, more traffic uh, snarls. But uh, for the most part, this area that you're seeing right now uh, with the highway patrol station there, uh, that has been blocked off uh, literally for hours now. Curtis Fuller live for us there in Clinton County. Thanks so much, Curtis. And now back to where all of this started here in the Kenwood area at the FBI facility where this suspect again tried to get in this morning with weapons. And WLWT News 5's Brian Hamrick is live where this drama began to unfold about seven hours ago. And Brian, you've been there uh, quite some time at this point. Yeah, actually, this was a very strange beginning to all this. Now, our sources with NBC News, their sources with the FBI, we're told that the man showed up here. This is a Kenwood facility, right? technically it's Sycamore Township. He came here inside this visitor screening area. He got to the screening area and displayed a nail gun. That's right, a nail gun, one you'd like put on uh, roofing shingles with. Fired that as some of the personnel here, then pulled out an AR-15 style weapon, waved that around. Of course, that set off alarms in the building armed FBI agents came running. The man took off from the building up 71 and ended up there where Curtis and Karen are now. And we have some video shortly after that. Uh, the FBI brought out their evidence uh, team to start collecting what they could find out here. Uh, there was a lot of interest in the window outside leading into this visitor screening area. We were able to take a closer look at that. It does look like there were scratches in the window and no one said the FBI has not said whether the nail gun was fired off on this side of the glass uh, or inside the other side of the glass. Homeland Security also brought up some teams and they've been here ever since. They brought a canine. Uh, the dog and the handler walked the perimeter of the FBI fencing. Uh, they've not said why the dog was brought in, but it wouldn't be uncommon for them to search the perimeter, uh, possibly looking for uh, the possibility of any explosives that were left behind. Now, apparently, all of this happened in a very short period of time. There's an office building, a, a huge office building just across the street from the 
FBI center here that has uh, massive glass windows overlooking the area. We've talked to dozens of people that work in that facility. Uh, no one saw any of this uh, unfold, none of the people that we talked to. However, there are security cameras all over, including a couple right on the front of this facility. Those would have captured it. We've also talked to a number of businesses around this area. The FBI, we know, has been out here collecting security camera video. So they should have a pretty good picture of what happened before, during, and after all of this. And eventually they'll want to know how that all unfolded. But they are still putting all this together, and it's still a very active investigation. Reporting live. Brian Hamrick, WLWT News 5. Yeah, I'm sure they're already looking through that video. Brian, I am wondering, we keep saying that he came in through the security, through that visitor area. Does the visitor area directly connect to the Cincinnati FBI offices? Yeah, I, I've been in here before, and the way I remember it, you have this visitor center, and then you have a void area there. I think you have to walk back outside and in or through a tunnel and into the main part of this. So there's a couple of different checkpoints there coming in, going out of this facility, then going back into the main part of the uh, FBI center here. So uh, there would be a few checkpoints. It's a little unclear, though, uh, Cherie, as to whether or not he was outside firing off this nail gun or if he got inside somehow. He had some ruse. He maybe said he had to talk to an agent or something, but whatever, it would be interesting to know how that all unfolded because, you know, if he was carrying an AR 15 style weapon and he somehow got in here, but maybe he was locked on the outside and maybe that's, you know, maybe pressed that gun up against the outside of this window and they've never said, but I'm certain these are at least bulletproof windows on here. So he wouldn't have gotten anywhere that way. Maybe that's what he thought he could do. Maybe he thought he could puncture that window and get inside, but, but it didn't work out. He ended up leaving when armed FBI agents uh, came out and uh, when that alarm was sounded, Cherie. All right, Brian Hamrick, much more, of course, as soon as we start to get new information, as soon as things wrap up in Clinton County and hopefully they get this guy in custody, I think we'll start to understand a little bit more and they'll come out and tell us exactly how all of this unfolded. But in the meantime, it has been a very busy day for those agents and local law enforcement since about nine o'clock when this happened. Brian, thanks so much.